talked about improving the communication with Kyler mm -hmm. from last year. Could you see that a little bit? Like it is, now is, going forward, how do you? Yeah, um, um, it's been, it started day one when we got back in, in um, OTAs and stuff like that. I mean, everything's been overly communicated. Last year, um, when AJ come in, you know, he had played in a traditional offense his whole time, and he lined up as a single receiver in, in, in Cincinnati offense um, the whole time. So here, you know what I'm saying, he's had to take a little bit of getting used to. And, of course, we're, we're no huddle. We're flying and stuff like that, and signals are fast and stuff. And so it took, took, took a little while to get to. And that's one of the things we wanted to focus on this, this year coming in is being, you know, over, just over-communicate and make sure everybody got it. And I told AJ as well, like, if you don't get it, man, you better yell, yell and like, hey, 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 check, check, check. Give it to me. So um, that's what we've been focused on, and, and, and so far, so good. You can still get, I don't want to say behind a guy, but he, he's faster than I think people give him credit for. You're absolutely right. I mean, you, I mean you, you can see it in practice. I mean, and again, it doesn't look – it doesn't look like he's running, right? That's the deception part you're talking about. It really doesn't look like he's running because he's such a long strider. But he can still run for a 30, 34-year-old guy. He's really kept himself in, in tremendous shape throughout the years um, with diet and exercise and all like that, um, taking care of his body with massages and everything like that. Um, um, I mean, he caught 800 yards last year at 33 years old. That's, that's, that's not bad. He's averaged, he averaged, I think, 16.1 or 16.2 yards a catch. That's for a 33-year-old. Um, that's that's pretty good, and if he and think about it, he missed two games of COVID, so you know possibly a thousand yard receiver last year. So we'll try to get him to that mark this year. How important is the boundary receiver in this offense? This is very important because we depend on those boundary receivers to win the one on ones um, um, out there. Most 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 of the time they're going to be working against the two best corners on the on, on the opposing team uh, roster and. They got to be up for. They got to be able to transition. One of those things we talk about where we do footwork so uh, so much in drill work. He's got to be able to, be able to transition in the breakout when there's tight coverage. He's got to be able to make that play. And having those guys like Hollywood, uh, D Hop, and and um, AJ out there, um, guys with length, you know. So that's another thing too. The quarterback don't have to be super accurate when those guys are out there. Their catch range is huge. So it basically throwing to a spot. So it's it's it's, it's huge for a boundary receiver. What do you envision out of Rondell this year? Uh, Rondell, well, um, what we did this year, starting uh, OTAs, we played him outside and inside. So he's gotten work at both uh, X and, and the H inside. So you guys are going to see him in a, most of, uh, in a bunch of positions. I mean, even in the backfield, coming out the backfield and stuff like that. So he can, he's one of those guys that can do it all, man. He's, uh, he's quick. He's, he's very sure-handed. Um, again, going back to separate, he can separate in the break area, um, make guys miss uh, um, after the catch. So, um, you know, last year, he's coming in as a rookie. You got Hobb, you got a lot of guys, Zach Irk and stuff like that. We kind of use him in kind of, you know, jet sweeps and bubbles and stuff like that. But now the offense is totally wide open for what he can do for us this year. What, uh, what is Andy Isabella not doing to crack playing time? I just, I just think that, um, um, no, he's doing everything well for me. It's just a numbers game, to be honest with you. I mean, you got Hobb, you got AJ and stuff like that. Um, and he said he's had a really good camp for me so far. He really has. It's just, it's just a numbers thing, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's not like he can't play his game. He can play. And, um, he's fast enough to play, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, um, again, we talk about uh, guys being able to run. He can stretch the defense, you know what I'm saying? Right now it's just a numbers thing. And, and to be honest with you, I have to do a better job of, 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 of getting him in and, and on plays we can showcase, you know, showcase his skill set. Within that numbers game, what do you see from Antoine Wesley last year at this time just – Trying to be a guy that makes the team. Yeah. And now, what are you seeing the difference this year? Yeah, he's kind of grown. He, he he's kind of grown into a guy that that we can really really count on on the outside. Again, a guy with some length that can drop his weight, separate in the break area, can go up and make those contested catches. And, and um um um, he's taken a tremendous step from last year. Again, he you know he was kind of familiar with the offense because he played for Cliff before, but coming in, just the little nuances of things, and, and, and um, he's found a way to stick, you know, and then so much about this thing when guys come into the league, it's not so much you know, where you're drafted and stuff like that, it's can you stick, can you find a way, you know, with your skill set, you know, to make it valuable to the team, and he's done that, you know, and, and it helps that he's 6'4 as well. Show off his Super Bowl ring to you, and if so, what was your reaction? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'll just leave it at this. I'm happy for my son, and uh, I wish we had the ring. I'll just leave it at that. What did it mean to be named an associate head coach? Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just. I'm not a big title guy, but it just, it just means that you just, you know, you, you've done something right, and 
that's just it. I'm not tired of guy. I just like I told my guys the other day, um, I'm not a associate head coach. I'm I'm Sean Jefferson. I just want to be the biggest servant to my players as I can. And let's just just be honest. My job is to help them realize their dream. That's getting paid, right? It's getting paid. That's 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 my job. And I just want to be the biggest servant to those guys as I can. How big is of an advantage is it for Victor Bolden having just played in the league? Yeah, that kid is really stuck out, to be honest with you. He's really stuck out. He's, he's, he's shifty. He's another guy that can play both inside and outside. He's shifty. He can make guys miss um, after the catch, um, special team-wise. So um, we, we, have a battle, we have a battle going on, on in that group across the board. You know, after those, those uh, first couple of guys, we have a serious battle going on. I'm, I'm anxious to see how it's going to shake out. And, you know, once we get those preseason games and everything like that, all that stuff will, will play itself out. Different for you. I believe you were drafted in the early 90s. You know, you've been at this coaching thing a while in the NFL. What makes kind of being here maybe stick out more than other jobs that you've had? Well, you know, the, the, I guess the caliber of players that, that I'm coaching, um, I haven't really had a group like this um, collectively that's really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had Calvin Johnson in Detroit, but he's, you know, he's Calvin Johnson. So, but now I got T Hop, I got AJ, you know, Hollywood. And, and um, the biggest part of my job is, is going to be having to be a psychologist, I guess, throughout the year because everybody everybody's going to want the ball, you know what I'm saying? So my job is to make sure those guys buy in and, and, and really, you know, put, you know, put their pride aside and just got to do what's best for the team. And I think, I think, we're, I think they share that, uh, uh, that, that same sentiment um, um, with me about just being selfish. Who whines the most? Hmm? Who whines the most? Uh, Rondell is my biggest whiner. He's for, for 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 good reason though. You know we got. You know I want to get the ball in his hands. He can create uh, with the ball in his hands. Have you gotten to work with Hollywood a lot yet? Uh, during the off season a little bit. Um, um, I tell you what, when he stepped on the field the first day, his speed just jumped off the charts. I mean it's like um, I would really like to see him and Rondell um, race. You know, that'd be something to see. But his his speed and and I was really really pleased with how well he. Uh, he picked up the offense, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just can't wait till he, he gets out there. And I keep telling myself every time, okay, it's Hop, that's AJ, and then, and, oh, okay, Hollywood hasn't been, been out there yet. He brings a total different dynamic to the group. I mean, talking about stretching the field, um, you guys have seen he's been in Baltimore and everything like that. And so I just can't wait to get him out there, f you know, full speed, you know, along with the rest of the guys so we can work on that chemistry as a group. Do you think that role is going to change a lot for him? from the first six games when DeAndre's not out there to then when DeAndre comes back? Or are you going to have Hollywood basically be the same guy the whole time? I think, I think all the so, – so in our group, man, you know, we just don't have an X, or H, Y, and a Z and stuff like that. All these guys are interchangeable. You know what I'm saying? That's what I require of those guys. They got to know every position. You know, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to be X. He's going to be H. He's going to be we, – we, we truly believe in, in – in, in, and moving guys around and not giving and you know causing you know, different headaches for for the for the defense, You're not just leaving guys in the same spot. So he'll be he'll be all he'll be all over the place. AJ will too. He'll be inside. He'll be outside. Hop will be inside outside. So we all want to create some kind of havoc uh, um, uh, for for the defense to decide what we're going to do. You, you referenced that that battle. I guess another guy is Greg Dorch, who yeah. last year comes into camp yeah. after it started and seemed to just. Open eyes right away. Again, this this is a guy that um, he was getting ready to come out. I'll tell you this quick story. He's getting ready to come out at Wake Forest. So I was at the Jets at the time. So I'm watching film on him. I was like, man, I, I like I would love to go down and work this guy out. So I went down there on a private workout to work this guy out. And um, I tried to break this kid. Like I said, a two minute individual. He just would not quit. You know. But watching film on him, he was like, oh man, this guy's like five feet nothing, but he's making plays all over the place. And that's the thing that sticks out, out to me about about him, he plays bigger than what he really is. And he's very, very sure hands. So like I say, um, there's not a lot of coaches around the league that's in, in my position right now, having so much talent and stuff. And, and, and so, you know, my thing is to get these guys enough uh, reps during the, during the preseason. So if it doesn't shake out here, they got good film to have another team like, hey, look, we better take a look at this guy. Every drill possible. Every freaking drill possible at the kid. You know what I'm saying? And then I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, you got another year left. You know, why are you coming out? He said, Coach, look at me. I'm not growing anymore. I'm just going to go in. So, but uh, but um, he, he, he he broke all kind of records at, at Wake Forest. So he's a really good receiver. I'm glad to have him. Coach, back in the day, how much would you have loved to play in an offense like this? Oh, goodness, man. Yeah, I probably could last it three more years. But um, yeah, it's just crazy. This is good for his. Cliff is. Cliff is, uh, does a really good job of, of uh, uh, scheming, 
these plays and everything like that. And, and um, it's really a receiver's dream. That's why AJ, AJ had options to go other places, you know, but he wanted to come in and play in Cliff's offense because it's ball friendly. It really is ball friendly. Even though you haven't spent a lot of time with Hollywood just because his injury, he hasn't been here. Can you get a sense of his relationship with Kyler and how that's going to work? Oh, no, those, those two guys are close now. I've, I've spent enough time with them. They're close. They're like, they're like brothers. They're like brothers. They're, they're really, really close. And uh, the relationship is there. Their communication is there. Um, so I'm, I'm sure, you know, he's going to get a lot of balls when, 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 when both of them get out on that field together.